Okay, there are new details out about the attempted assassination on Donald Trump. The shooter had three overseas encrypted accounts. What is going on and what are they learning about this guy at 20 years old? And then there's another video of some guy that had a, um, that the shooter had his t-shirt or something. I don't know what that is, but please, mental health is what we're looking at. I'm not trying to figure out why all this happened, but what's behind it? And how does a 20 year old get to the point where they're willing to take out the president and anybody else who's around them without further ado? Oh boy, what are these accounts? What are we getting to? More questions this morning over the security failures that allowed Thomas Crooks to get a direct shot at former President Trump on Saturday. Sources tell Fox News that Butler Township Police flagged the Secret Service over a lack of manpower near the building that Crooks scaled and shot from. A New York Post headline says, quote, Trump rally shooter Thomas Crooks tracked ex-president's appearances for months. Three people were shot at the rally, one fatally. Mm. Right now in Pennsylvania, private funeral underway for Corey Comparatore. The volunteer fire chief died while shielding his family in so the crowd. Sad. Let's bring in Kara Frederick, wow. former DOD counterterrorism analyst. And Kara, the big question in this investigation is how in the world that rooftop was left uncovered. In the world of the Secret Service and presidential campaign events, it is an absolute no-no for an elevated platform with line of sight to where the president is going to be to remain either unblocked or unprotected. You know, knowing this and knowing they do outside rallies and other things, I think it's different in private venues where it's enclosed and they can really isolate who's coming in. I would feel safe going to a rally inside an arena. I don't think I'd feel safe going to an outside any rally at this point. Just for this reason that you go thinking you are as safe as you can be. But the trouble is you're safe within that arena that they kept people. And anybody who's ever been through trauma, anybody who's ever been not even shot at, but been around violence and been in fear for their life. And if you've ever been in a place where you felt like you might die, you might get attacked, you might be trapped. Seriously. And PTSD kicks in. I would be going to a place like this looking around at everything, wondering where is something going to come from? Uh, it's partially why I like sitting, you know, on the aisle when I go to different events. I want to be on a place where exit is easy for us. But no, my family likes sitting at the movies in the middle. And that's okay. We can do that. But I would get so fearful at this point. When it comes to mental health, please pay attention to that for yourself. Please pay attention to what keeps you safe. I don't want to put people in harm's way. And it's easier to know that uh, you have an exit strategy, that you understand the people are around you. As we always say, keep your head on a swivel and just look around and see what's there. But there are times you can't protect yourself. And what this has to do for people, even who have watched it on TV in terms of PTSD and trauma and saying, you know, this, if this can happen there, this could happen anywhere. And so we can exacerbate that in our mind. We can blow it up. We can make it way more than than it needs to be for our own sanity. And it can make us feel crazy at times. But the real crazy is in somebody doing this and thinking it's okay. For him to get to a point mentally, emotionally, where he felt like it was okay to do this. And at what point, I really wonder at what point he locked in this 20 year old to saying, I'm doing it. I wonder if he had any doubts while he was walking around an hour before. I wonder if he was thinking about what was about to happen. And I wonder if he was realizing ever that other people were going to die as well. Mm. Do you have any theories as to what might have happened? No, I think we're clearly not getting the full picture here because as you intimated, this is physical security 101. And the fact mm -hmm. that that rooftop was not secured is a massive oversight. So in terms of theorizing on what happened, it is critical for a security plan to have your local law enforcement, to have your state officials and to have your federal authorities all coordinating. It appears that there was some sort of lapse in coordination here. But what I think the bigger question is, is there are reports that he was surveilling President Trump Trump's movements mm -hmm. over the course of months. 
how does how do we not know how he was surveilling? Do we uh, what digital platforms was he using to do it? Every type of sensor that the world is saturated with right now emits what we call a digital exhaust. They should be able to track down his geolocation based off of the digital surveillance platforms he was supposedly using. They should have a pattern of life for this kid. They should have content emanating out of that to paint a more fulsome intelligence picture to get after this guy. The fact that that wasn't done beforehand and it doesn't appear to be, they don't appear to be exploiting that data at least accurately for the public to see now, this is a massive oversight as well. You know, an intriguing mm. uh, little development in all of this, according to uh, Congressman Michael Waltz from Florida, uh, in that briefing with the Secret Service and the FBI, uh, members of Congress were told that crooks had three encrypted accounts on overseas platforms. Uh, I, I don't think the nature of the platforms was described. We don't know if they were financial accounts or if they were social media accounts or some other kind of account. Now you're getting no information there. Like, what does that mean? On what kind of platforms? Like, is that social media? Is that some kind of thing where he had uh, money? But he's 20. I don't even know how to do an overseas account, much less an encrypted overseas account. I don't know what this means and how did this start? Where does this come Describe. from? We don't know if they were financial accounts mm. or if they were social media accounts or some other kind of account. But now there appears to be some sort of international component to all of this. Yeah, I think this is so interesting, too. But as something I did for almost 10 years with the government and then with the big tech company, what you do is you can extract data from these platforms. You can figure out, you know, who were these platforms mm -hmm. that he was supposed to be using, even if they were encrypted? Who was he talking to? What are his IP addresses? Can you geolocate him to those um, those physical locations? This is something tech companies can do. Mm -hmm. Was he using aliases? Are there any what are the, the connections to that network via those platforms? I like you said. We don't know the nature of those encrypted overseas accounts, but there are people who are in the government, even who are outside of the government, who can work to exploit that information that those accounts would convey. So the hearing next week should give us a lot of answers because this is happening. The public is just not aware of what actually is going on. All right. So we've got hearings next week. But but a bigger question in all of this is given the security failures and how these erupted and the fact that we know almost nothing about crooks and what his motivations might have been. Mm. Does there need to be a, you know, in the wake of the Kennedy assassination, the Warren Commission was struck. Now, a lot of that was political cover for Lyndon Johnson. But do we need to? How does this even get to a point where he's involved with this and nobody else knows about it? He's 20 years old. He lives at home. I just have to wonder what his parents imagined was happening with him. He's learned how to shoot a gun, obviously. I don't know if his parents would shoot guns with him. And, you know, there's plenty of people who practice shooting guns and, and they're used to that. I don't know what their history is with that. But how do they not know he has these different accounts or that anything's off with them or that he seemed different lately or that he was getting close to this? I promise you, people who end up doing something like this don't look completely normal all the way up to the point they're doing this. Usually you start to see behavior that's gonna show them being a little bit off, their mood being a little bit different and their cadence being a little bit different. So I wonder how does all this stuff go down and the parents just have no idea at all? Oh. And the Warren Commission was struck. Now a lot of that was political cover for Lyndon Johnson, but do we need to have something of that level to look into this? Oh, I completely agree with that. Yes, Congress have has oversight capabilities. And you look at the senators trying to track down the head of Secret Service as she's walking away from them. That is a reverse of how this is supposed to work, right? Our senators and our representatives, they represent the American people and the heads of those federal agencies. They work for us. They work for us. She should not be evading those questions. There's a measure of transparency here that the American people are owed. Because mm. I'll tell you what, John, this does not pass the smell test. The fact that a 20-year-old would not have a heavy social media presence or minimal presence at all, and that it, in the face of that, he would have better operational security than the seasoned al-Qaeda operatives that I tracked down over the course of years, doesn't pass the smell test. The American people deserve answers. Let's give it to them, Congress. And if one 20 year old kid can breach security as this one did, imagine if it was actually, if, if you know, we, we've heard that it wrong. Yeah, like if it was actually a professional, somebody who really knows what they're doing, what, that, what would happen. On wanted to take the president out. If they sent an actual trained team, God, you know, God knows what would have happened that day. Kara, great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hey, everyone.
All right, so that's video one. We've got another video on this too, and this is very interesting. So let me pull this up because it is actually a video on, it's, it's titled, The Trump Shooter Was Wearing My Shirt. Isn't that interesting? What is this guy about? I'm sure there will be a lot of people watching this video who do not know me, who are, are new to this channel, mm -hmm. and are just checking in based on recent occurrences. So... For those who are new, for those who do not know me, my name is Matt Carricker. I am a Texas-based YouTuber. Wow. Texas. And this is my there YouTube channel. Underwear um, in Texas. Demolition Ranch is a firearm-centered channel. I also have um, Off the Ranch Matt Carricker channel, which is a, a vlog-type channel. And then I'm also a veterinarian. Wow. So I have Vet Ranch, which is a like veterinary-centered channel. And across the board, across all of my videos we really don't talk about politics at all. We keep politics out of it. For one, it's not my bread and butter, but also I don't feel the need to impose my political views and beliefs on other people. It's the same with me. You know, it's this channel I do is not here for politics. It's not here for political opinions even. It's here to discover and understand mental health and why people do the things they do, what the patterns of behavior are. So somehow this shooter must be linked to this guy. And I don't know if he watched his channel, liked him, but I'd love to know where in Texas this guy is. People. And so we generally just stay away from the topic of politics. However, we were obviously kind of thrust into the conversation after last weekend. So before I go any further, to the family of the victim who died during the Trump shooting. Uh, man, I'm so sorry for your loss. It's terrible, and I, I hate that that happened to him mm -hmm. and to you guys. Yeah. And you know, wishing wishing you guys the best from here. It's That's the worst. For those who were injured in the shooting as well, wishing you guys um, a speedy recovery, praying for pain-free recovery for you as well, both physically and mentally. I can't imagine. So, as a lot of you guys know, um, and we were shocked and confused to, to find this out, the shooter who tried to assassinate Trump was wearing merch from my channel, wearing a, a Demolition Ranch t-shirt. Bro, like, oh, I can't even imagine. Like, I'm, I'm just kind of shaking here, thinking what that must feel like. I imagine somebody being involved in something and they're wearing, you know, the reaction therapy merch when something tragic happens. I don't even know what I would feel like if that happens. It's terrible. Because then there's an association to you, and clearly he had an association to him. It's got to even know it, but he at least is talking about it. And trying to show the world who he is and what he's about. But he's almost flabbergasted, it seems like. And that mm. sucked to see that. Yeah, that was, that was rough. So this, this t-shirt, we also own a t-shirt company. Um, and it's based out of this, my hometown right here. And my friends work there and we, we make these shirts. We print them here in Texas and ship them all over the world. Uh, I've seen my shirts in every continent. I got a picture like two weeks ago of a guy wearing my shirt in Antarctica. And so we don't vet the people who buy our shirts, yeah. obviously. It'd be impossible to, just like Nike doesn't vet who buys their shoes. I wish I could. I would love to keep people like that from buying, wearing, being associated with mm -hmm. that article of clothing. Yeah. Like, I wish, I wish he couldn't get a shirt. But it happened. and. Yeah, it'd be the same with me. I don't want somebody wearing a Mental Health Matters shirt when they're doing something crazy. Like, it doesn't help. That's not the purpose. The purpose is I want to be mental health. So when you see me wearing this, that you see mental health because it does matter. We do need to pay attention to it. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't blame this guy. I think the difference in, you know, a gunman wearing a, a pair of Nike shoes and a gunman wearing my T-shirt is... This brand is much more personal to me than Nike is to its executives. 
And so to see my name mm. next to the shooter's name, oh, it sucks. Mm -hmm. And I wish, I wish we could keep that from happening. So no matter what side you're on politically, none of us want violence. This channel was never meant to incite violence or hate. It never has, it mm -hmm. isn't, and it never will be a channel that does that. I don't want any violence or hate anywhere around me. I have a wife and little kids. I want them to be safe and secure forever. Mm -hmm. And the videos I put out, I want to make sure that is the same for everyone who watches my videos, that they aren't in any more danger because of my videos, of course. And I know you guys know that. I have 11 million subscribers who have been watching me for oh. over 10 years and know that I That's am awesome. uh, not that kind of person. This is mostly for the people who are just tuning in to see if mm -hmm. I am a guy that is trying to make people do stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I am not. Uh, obviously, I don't have to explain that to you guys who know me, but I, I feel like I might need to say that for those who don't. This channel is not about violence. This channel will never be. And uh, mm -hmm. we never would condone that at all. Yeah. I hate that. It's a weird, a weird deal. Oh. And yeah, I have, I have news articles calling me, asking for interviews, asking what I know about the shooter, asking yeah. if I've ever had any communication with the shooter, if I've ever... It's very sobering because... You don't know anything about this. I don't know who's all bought the merch that we have at our channel. I don't. I don't know what they've done with it. But you're automatically linked now. Never met him. No. He bought a shirt online. And unfortunately wore it that day. Anyway, wishing mm. the best for everyone affected by this. Um, obviously, the way I'm affected is nothing compared to the way some people are affected by this. So... Um, not trying to take anything away from them, but yeah, just kind of letting you guys know. I wanted to tell you guys who know me that we're here, we're still, still going, and uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's not what we stand for, and mm. it will never be what we stand for, and uh, we're gonna keep keep trucking. When you're watching a, a CNN article and it it says three names, the shooters, Trumps, and mine. I was not on my 2024 bingo no. card. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to end this video. Let's move forward. And, uh, oh, man. Um, thank you guys for listening. Thanks for watching. And most of all, thanks for the support. I love you. That's sweet. That's a nice guy. I wish nothing but good fortune to him and his business and what he does because he seems like a good hearted guy. And we need to remember that uh, this, you know, the mental health side of this is this whole thing can mess with everybody. It's messing with him. You know, it, he now has to explain things. He now has to question himself like, gosh, and what in the world did this guy, he's probably thinking, pick this shirt that day to wear. Or did the 20 year old not even care? He just grabbed a shirt out of his drawer and that happened to be the shirt. Or is it like a favorite shirt of his? And the shirt doesn't have to have anything tied to what he believes about this guy sometimes we have shirts just because we like the shirt or maybe he just put it on who knows but please if you notice someone in trouble say something say something to somebody because too many people see guys like this 20 year old walking through high school not paid attention to a recluse not uh, be, being treated nicely being treated he's, he's not being treated nicely he's being treated rudely picked on bullied and we don't do anything to get help and we need to do that Mental health matters. Y'all leave your comments. Let me know what you think. And we'll see you on the next Reaction Therapy.